Big Blend travel writer Linda Kassam, the food, wine, and shopping diva, is back on Big Blend Radio today. And apparently, she is sending Nancy and I on a story mission as part of our Love Your Parks tour. Now, uh, Diva Linda is the president of the International Food, Wine, Travel Writers Association, and she's also the publisher, get this, of allingoodtaste.info. That's diva worthy. I like it. Diva styling. Mm -hmm. Welcome back, Diva Linda. So, um, Apparently, you're sending us on a mission possible uh, in regards to getting a, a special story series for you on our tour. Yes, I am. So your story mission is to find me as many unique and, of course, sparkly shopping destinations as possible. Can you unique handle that? And sparkly. Yes. Mm. Uh, the sparkly, you're going to have to teach us on that a little bit, don't you think? <laughs> well, I do have questions. Yes, we have questions. Priscilla, our little sock monkey just set up. When mm. when when you're out and about, how what draws you to a particular store to go in and go? Oh, I just got to go in there and look. What what? Well, it should be colorful on the outside and inviting. That's number one. Uh, mm -hmm. Or mysterious, and sort mm -hmm. of, hmm, what could I find in there? And I would hope that I would see something on the outside that indicates that there are local products made inside that the regional or local that's really important to me i can buy you know a drum anywhere but is that if that drum is made regionally then i'm more interested okay ah, we like this yeah we like this uh so local regional gifts and something on the outside that's colorful mm. must they put sparkles in the window <laughs> well i would i would hope so you know we like crystals and so forth i mean it's all mm. it's all good luck we like that a lot and then putting gems you know inside of your room on strategic corners calms the atmosphere makes it wonderful makes it uh Function. takes all the negative energy out yeah, that's right there you go mm. okay so we like this so there's places that um like you have done some amazing shopping. Just if I look back in the last year of your travels, incredible. Um, year and a half, two years, even some of these places you went to. Um, I look at Long Beach uh, up in Oregon that you went on there, and you went on a treasure hunt uh, for those glass uh, blown uh, those glass balls on the beach. And then you went into another area on, you went to Washington and you walked on this peninsula and went to a garden party and this garden trail and there was art involved. And are those, does that go into shopping if it's that kind of experience that you get to bring back goodies? Like if you find the treasures, is that it? Well, a for me, yeah, for me, it's always been about bringing back at least one memento usually 50 but at least one that reminds me of the sense of place that i've been just you know sometimes it's really huge like i have this huge rug that takes over the entire uh, wall of my uh home that reminds me where i was sometimes it's uh a, just a little tiny sparkly that i hang in the window that reminds me of a, a wonderful place i've been so i like the earrings i love to have earrings rings bracelets jewelry that sort of thing uh things that i can wear and are close to my heart and my and my uh love line meaning the things that i treasure in my heart so yep mm. shopping is definitely i think you understand better where you are you understand the people better and, and of course especially if it's regional uh mm. and local gifts I think that's cool because Natchitoches, Louisiana, when we were there, we were in the downtown district, Front Street. I remember Nancy mm -hmm. and Arlene, who runs the CVB there, took us downtown and we went into, and this is on the waterfront, and we're talking cobblestone streets, you know, beautiful, mm -hmm. magnolias in bloom. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. just, so there was this unique sense there. And then we happen to go into Cafe Frederick's, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that is the oldest general mercantile store in the state since the 1800s. And it's this family history, these two families uniting to create this. I mean, this was back when, you know, this is the oldest city in the state. And uh, you go in, and they have gardening implements. They have implements from their past, like from, you know, the 1800s. Mm -hmm. They have jewelry on one side they had sock monkeys so priscilla was happy <laughs> they have all these different things from the past everything. now like if you you know if your mixer broke you could go there so it, it, mm -hmm. you can get your luck done now would that be something that you would go into because i think that was a unique experience 
you know, just to go into this old mercantile, but there was local art there and the man had passed away. Unfortunately, but there was this local mm -hmm. art of this, you do coffee painting. So he made coffee and then did these, he'd use a straw and like blow art onto a piece of paper and do different designs. There was the yep, cypress so knees. That was it with yep. painted like Santa. Mm -hmm. So that kind yep. of thing. Okay. You know, it, it's if you if you go into these places like you're talking about, it's going to be a treasure hunt. Sure, there's going to be some things that maybe you know don't interest you, but you, but you've got to go with a good attitude and a sharp eye, and you're going to see things that were, are just, will just engage you. It'll be just it'll be fabulous coffee art. Who knew? Now maybe I wouldn't take home coffee art, but maybe I would. I don't know, but maybe right next to it, there might be a, a beautiful necklace or uh, I don't know, maybe there's a wonderful book that I couldn't find anywhere else. These are the places that you find those gifts that uh, you're not going to find, you know, anywhere else. That, that's why you go to places like that. Mm. It, it was, you know, on the outside, it looked small. Mm. And then when mm -hmm. we walked inside, we were blown away because oh. it was like two floors. And yeah, was, he had his, an elevator. Was, yeah, he had an elevator. <laughs> and, it was, and it was jam packed with things. I know. And he was like, whoa. The flags, the, mm -hmm. I mean, everything. The other, and he had Coca Cola that you could get, just like in the old oh, bottle. Yeah, like you know, put in your, your 50 cents or whatever. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't, yep, don't yep. come on the price, everyone. But this was the thing there was this <laughs> conversation that, that you know happened and that's and then all the stores actually went down through there's a lady who made art out of okra pods that are dry I mean it was like this is you know a whole other world but then you're talking to the store owner and that's what I've learned about stores is that so it's kind of like you know what you do as a food wine travel writer do you find the shopping part is like you always talk to the chef as much as you can if you can at least say right. hi that kind of thing isn't that the same thing with shopping is to talk to the shop owner you really absolutely if you can get to the owner it's really best but if you can also if that's not possible a, a long time or dedicated employee especially if they've been there a long time and they've seen the changes they know the old they know the new those are those are the wonderful com conversations they can tell you why the the, the big six foot santa is over there but it only has one foot you know they can tell you why they decided to do uh alligator heads paper mache alligator heads you know Mm. Uh, it's it's you know uh, Bobby Sue brought in these uh, these bracelets and uh, yeah they seem to be inexpensive but look at the quality you know it's that kind of experience that you just love just love to talk to these people they love the place they're in they want you to love it you know it's just uh, it's very very special the other thing too and you went on the uh, Viking River Cruise for the Christmas markets remember that oh yeah, yeah. see that's oh. this whole other thing you were saying, though, oh. the biking is awesome. It's amazing experience as a cruise line but um, and intimate, you know. But you were mm -hmm. saying the one thing that you really wish would make life easier as a shopper, <laughs> and we know, we know how you are, is you wanted like a service to happen, whether it's at the stores or on the, on the ship, where things would get shipped. And I know they were working on some of that. What about that? I mean, when I think about people going shopping, sometimes it's like, what do you do with all your, you know, stuff? <laughs> you know, exactly go to the car way down right. there? Yeah, yep, somebody is somebody is missing a business there. Uh, I think for I, I think if you're on a cruise ship like Viking, you should be able to come in from your uh, shopping experiences because that's pretty much what every port is. Hand your bag over the to the shopping person, and they just collect it, collect it, collect it. At the end, they give you a bill for shipping it, and it's all done. Mm -hmm. Don't have I to worry about it. You just, yeah, good. you don't have to take it with you to the next stop. You don't have to try to get it through customs. You don't have to worry about, you know, the wine bottle spilling on, you know, the rest of your clothes and all that sort of stuff. Somebody's missing out. That would be a service. Uh, that would be a compliment, not complimentary, but uh, they should, they need to find a way to make it as inexpensive as possible or maybe at the end of wherever you're going, if you're, especially on a cruise, you know, your starting point, your ending point, maybe some of these ending points could have something very close to the dock where you just sort of step off, you hand them their bags and away, away your stuff goes. Wheel it all in. <laughs> I, I, like, I like it when they have gift, a gift wrapping service. Because yeah, that's cool. I need that. I need that help. Yep. I want yes, to ask too. you, because you've been, you know, to so many different countries, have you found yourself where you're in a place where you um, are expected to bargain and, and try to bargain the price down? 
Oh, gosh. You know, people used to tell me that all the time. You know, bargain, do this, do that. It's part of the culture and blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah. my first experience with that was in Venice, in, uh, oh. uh, in Italy, of really thinking, okay, yeah, I'm going to just, uh, I'm, you know, they said, oh, yeah, the, the, you know, the <laughs> people will bargain with you. Well, my husband took that too seriously, and the two of us were talking to a shop owner, and we got thrown out. We insulted them. And I'm serious about that. And every time we'd walk by, we were there for three or four days, they'd be shaking their finger, you know, or their head. And I that taught me a really good lesson. But don't necessarily listen to people who say that. And, and you know, and, I, you know, is bargaining really that anymore? Maybe it was a long time ago, but I'm not sure that uh, in today's market that's true. Anyway, I've never done that again. I, You know, if, if I want something... And uh, and I think the price is fair. I just buy it, and that's all mm. there is to it. What you know? What difference is it going to make to me in you know six months? Yeah, you know, when we lived in Mexico for about six months or so, and that does happen in parts of Mexico where they bargain. But it's mm-hmm. so I found it to be really uncomfortable to be expected yes. to lower a price because the price has already seemed really low anyway. <laughs> if you just yeah, stand there, they do it. They do a little bit, but that's it. I think it's also changed. It's more of the border mm-hmm. stops more than when you're in yeah. the interior, you know. It and I seems- just wonder if that may be something you do if you've been in the shop a lot, you're, you're buying a lot, or and mo- mostly yeah. in places where they bargain and you start saying, oh, I have one of those. I might buy two of those, three of these. You know, pretty soon they say, you bought so much, you know, we'll just either throw in something or, you know, the price, mm-hmm. we need to be able to discount or something. I just don't know that, you know, Mm. That that's part of the persona that I that I want to go forward with. Divas yeah. do not people, bargain. Yeah, because a lot of yeah. travel books tell you to bargain. Yeah, they but really do. Um, but that is an old school yeah. thing, I think, in in a way. And it yeah. just yeah, every I place is it. different, I think. But yeah, there's a hmm. if someone put a price on it, that's their value. You know, that's yeah. their value. Yeah. And, and that's you right. Know, when it's, it's really know. difficult to me when it's handcrafted, especially. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I would be willing to go with somebody who knew how to do this and see how they did it, but I'm still not sure that that's the the um, the program for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One thing I want to talk about is, you know, I know like there's places that you know Nancy, you and I have been to, um, like mm-hmm. Three Rivers, California, and all those little stops that are all art mm-hmm. shops, and you know they have that Exeter. art first Saturday mm-hmm. art thing, you know, Exeter mm-hmm. with the murals mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's outlet malls, which have their own benefit too. That's a whole mm-hmm. different thing, yeah. but you know, you're there for then yeah. you, that's your bargain, you know? Um, yep. so there's those good things, but the, the one thing, you know, when you look at a place becoming a shopping district, whether it's, Oh, we have a lot of antique shops or we have bookstores, mm-hmm. which yay are coming back. Um, and, and you know, galleries, that kind of thing. Um, sometimes you, and I know that shopping is one of the top things that people do when they travel, they go shopping. Sometimes you don't see it promoted as much. Like I almost feel like that's an under discovered, not discovered thing, but I think it should be at the forefront of a destination that we have unique shopping if they have mm-hmm. it. And that there should be programs where the shopkeepers communicate so they're not all selling the same stuff. You know, so it's an experience for when someone goes there. I would agree. I think that especially the part about don't have all the same things. Mm-hmm. Where's that place I just went where the donkeys run around and they own the town? Oatman. 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 Yeah. Oatman. Okay. So I was really expecting something so fabulous. And my sister was telling me, oh, you wait to see the leather goods and the this and the that. It's going to be so much fun. And of course, the donkeys were wonderful. And of course, <laughs> you get to feed them. And it was a real, it was a real uh, unique experience for me. But out of mm. the eight or so shops that are still left there, mm. they all carry the same thing. I was yep. so disappointed. I, I, mm. who's, who's not managing the farm here, people? Mm. Exactly. You know? That's when, when communities don't seem to work. You know, that's why this importance of communities having a shared tourism vision. And mm-hmm. in shopping, you'll see, like, there's a restaurant association, a downtown association. Then it's more about, oh, what kind of events can we do downtown? Then the shop owners get mad because now you're having, like, a flea market outside your door. You know, so there's this balance that has to happen. And I think the events do create new shopping opportunities that you don't always see everything because, these, you know, these could be their local artists that, you know, get to set up a tent in the downtown. But... I even look at farmer's markets as being part of a shopping experience because you get to taste local produce and foods. But this thing where shops have something unique 
so you know everywhere you're going is something unique. You could have 10 shoe stores, but they better not have all the same shoes. Exactly. You know, so there's your shoe shopping mm -hmm. destination with sparklies. One's the leather, one's the sparklies for Diva Linda. Mm -hmm. We know where mm -hmm. she's going. You know, mm -hmm. there's the hiking boots. I'm there. You know, yeah. so you have these things. <laughs> but um, one thing, too, so everyone has something unique. I'm just looking how to scout this out for you, Diva Linda. What about parking and peeing? <laughs> Parking and I don't know why that came out that way, but it did. <laughs> did Bathroom. You, did you, what about towns that don't have restrooms? And then you have oh, to go yeah. to the shop owner, and the shop owner is like, yeah. well, that's my yeah. private toilet. You know. So what about that? So I think that if you want to be a shopping district, you ought to have no parking. You should have at least one part of your shopping area to be where you can just wander around and you go across the street when you want to. There's no parking in, in a specific area. It's, uh, I, for, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's called a pedestrian mall. I yeah. like that a lot. I think that's quite wonderful. <coughs> Certainly the donkeys in Oatman made it a sort of a, a no parking area, but um, uh, otherwise I think, you know, bricks and, and trying to make it, uh, the decor match the feeling there, mm -hmm. right? So don't be putting, you know, uh, sandstone and something that, that, you know, doesn't really match with sandstone. So number one, so that's, that's what I think. And then just make your parking free, please, and close, please. Mm -hmm. And if you can't make it free and you can't make it close, then offer a reasonable shuttle. Still close. You're going to lose people if they can't get in and get out. That's my thought on that. And the bathroom issue is, yeah, people, if you... <laughs> If you have ice cream, if you're selling sodas, if you're if you have restaurants, if you have you have babies with bottles, I don't know whatever else you have there, you have to have, and they better be darn clean. They That's should be right. clean. They should be supervised. Somebody should be having their eye on it. Meaning, you know, every couple yeah. hours somebody goes in and look. I'm not saying somebody has to be in there, but I'm telling you, somebody has to watch over it. Mm -hmm. Make it such a good experience. You know, some of the my, some of my best memories of some places is how how wonderful the bathrooms were. I mean, you know, there's so many things you can do. You know what? And mm -hmm. there's there's a place in Gila Bend, Arizona. So this is between Tucson and Yuma, and then you could go from Gila Bend up to Phoenix. So this area, or you could go down to Organ Pipe. So it is the bathroom break place, right? It's actually got a huge amount of historic significance, but so there's a lot of bathroom rest area, like restroom areas because it's, you know, the gas stations and all of that. Mm -hmm. But there is mm -hmm. this one that none of, like everyone knows, like this is the one to go to. And it's the Shell's ga gas station, everyone, because I will promote this. It's right off the interstate, <laughs> off the Butterfield State Route. <laughs> anyway, you go there. Now they've actually put in showers that people can use, truck drivers can use them, but they also use it for people traveling. They, and they're clean. The bathrooms are the cleanest. They have a shop there selling all these different Mexican ceramics and, you know, all these different things. Their gas station shop has a lot of different things. You know, I mean, there's a lot of, there's, you can, there's if you need to go camping <laughs> and stock up, you can. They have grown, I mean, I've been, I have been stopping there for 20 years. And that is mm -hmm. the place because I know it's clean, it's safe. And if you need to buy a gift for someone on your way, you can get you can that. If you need food, you get it. And they have wine if I need wine for a wine picnic real fast. So I'm just saying, <laughs> you end up, even the gas station needs to hear about that kind of thing. And it's about having a yep, clean restroom. Exactly. But you'll it buy is. stuff. They learn you that. You will mm -hmm. buy. I know that. And, uh, and you're right. Once you're out of your car, you're more likely than to, uh, mm -hmm. and feeling relieved, if you get my drift. Yes. You're, you know, you're more likely to go into the shop and, and uh, spend a little time out of your car, spend some money. You're, you're going to buy something. There's no doubt about it. And uh, I think everything you just said is so valid. And gosh, I wish we could make a poster or a song about it. That was well put. I like I'll that. do it. I'll do it. I'll write it. I'll write it. <laughs> no, but it's, it's a really cool thing. I, I always look at that as when towns are doing revitalization projects and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, the other yeah. thing I wanted to ask you, because, you know, just being on trips with you, um, mm -hmm. I remember Stafford's chocolate in Porterville, mm -hmm. which yeah. is now grown and they have live music and, you know, yep. um, it's now Most in the fabulous. downtown district. Yeah. You were into, not just for travel writers experiences, having an experience. So 
if you get in there and they have a class, then that's part of that shopping experience. I'm going to learn how to make chocolate covered strawberries. Um, but by the time you're done with that, you're going to end up buying some, right? So it's, you're getting Absolutely. experience. Mm. You have to, I think you have to, um, especially things that are a little more, uh, from, uh, a little more upscale, right? If you have enough room and you can, uh, uh, you, what you're doing is you're engaging people and you're showing them how to, how the products work and what to do with them and stuff. And, or maybe it's just a corner where there's a small tea room, right? Or a small coffee place where people just stop. And once you stop, you start looking around. Mm -hmm. And even if you're taking a cooking class, you're looking around, you're thinking about the things you use in the class and all that sort of thing. So I like the experience. I think that is, uh, you know, I, I like the experience in dining now. I like, uh, I want more than just coming in, uh, putting my money down, and then and then leaving. You know, sometimes that that's just fine, but really engage me. Show me, show me what you got. Show me why you have it. Yeah. I don't know. Show me how to use it. Maybe it's you're in a oh. restaurant, mm. and then the chef has a cookbook. Yeah. Like even if it's yep. just a little mm -hmm. teeny one, you know, can that's be right. black and white. I don't care. You know, that's <laughs> right. it's not recipe cards, but you get to take something back. You've eaten. You've enjoyed the place. Maybe it's a hot sauce. Maybe it's a. You know what? The Tabasco cooking class gave us, they gave us this wonderful uh, wooden spoon. And not like any wooden spoon. So, you know, if it just had been a stupid ass wooden spoon, then I probably wouldn't have taken it. But it was, uh, it had a specific purpose for in a specific cooking thing. And, uh, you know, if they bought a gazillion thousand to give to everybody, the, the price wasn't much, but it was well done. It was well crafted. It was, uh, it had their signature on it and not in a, you know, a big way, but, you know, in a, in a nice way. And uh, this is what you're saying. I, you know, you can, mm -hmm. you can do things like this in a very nice way and people take it home and people ask, you know, your friends say, well, you know, where'd you get that spoon? And what are you, why are you using it that way? And then you tell them a full story and, you know, it's just engagement. I think it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I think the one thing too, I want to touch on since this is the Love Your Parks tour, one thing we started when we were on phase one was we bought a passport book and you go and you get your, your passport stamped in every park that you go on. And it's, you know, that's our memory. It's part of that thing, but it's a nice gift, right, for park lovers. And I've discovered that state parks have their own passport things. I mean, it seems that there's all these different programs like that. And one thing is a lot of park visitor centers have gift shops. And sometimes you'll find some of the coolest novels or yes. books on the area. Um, sometimes you find postcards. It's hard to find postcards anymore. And I miss postcards. I want to I want to come back of postcards, really, people. <laughs> Bring them back. <laughs> T-shirts, all of that kind of thing. That is so regional specific. I know a lot of national parks here, um, like here in Tucson at Saguaro National Park. If you go in their their gift shop, which is always attached to visitor center, usually anyway, you'll find books from National Geographic and regional books. You'll find seeds on growing your own saguaro cactus. You'll find things that are unique, toys for kids that are really fun and educational, especially if they've been there. And the money helps go through an association like this is the Western Park Conservation Association, and they help fund the park for different projects, whether it's taking out invasive species or uh, building benches or, you know, some kind of revitalization program. So I just want to say, is that is that DIVA worthy? Is it DIVA approved? I love going into those regional park uh, gift shops because they are unique. And just like you said, and especially good if you have a special interest, that's probably where you're going to find the book that you need. Or maybe let's just say that you were out and um, you, you did see a specialized uh, garden, a botanical garden of some sort. There's likely to be a book that you can find in the shop that you can take home about that, understand it, and uh you know, maybe do something else with it, like, uh, I don't know, uh, find out which plants might uh, go well in your own garden. So mm -hmm. I would agree with you. I think that's uh, very, very smart. Awesome. Cool. Well, Diva Linda, we're accepting this yes. mission. And oh, yeah. Priscilla, the sock monkey, says she wants to go in the fashion -y places. And she's into the sparkle because <laughs> you taught her well. Yes. You taught her well. She had her Diva lessons <laughs> with Diva Linda. Uh, she's had quite a few with you. And even wine tasting, <laughs> Pinot Pony said he wants to go. You know, he's going to find too. yes. Um, it, just oh saying, Pinot Pony was a little disturbed that he didn't get to go to Oregon with you. So um, oh, we'll have to judge. we'll have to hook up with you when you get up to, uh, back um, on the in the Pacific Northwest. 
this coming yes. summer and uh, see see if we can make our little Pinot Pony cork horse happy. <laughs> <laughs> I know everyone, it's the menagerie of animals. You know, our friend Ralph Massingill, uh, he's our change agent expert, change management expert. Um, he is from the Eastern Tennessee moonshine country. And one year he sent us a t-shirt in a mason jar, which smelled like it had the whiff of moonshine in it. Uh, Priscilla almost fell backwards. Then this year <laughs> he sent us two little mason jars of moonshine. And so we, you know, I took a photo of Priscilla and the gang, and you know the gang of monkeys. Oh gosh! And I sent him yes. a photo because they opened it. Now everybody, this is not this. This is you know how you Real get the little shot. airport bar <laughs> thingies, the little airport dinkies. These are miniature mason jar dinkies. It's so cute. So oh, I'm like, mini. Cute. These are mini, and they're smoky, old Smoky Mountain moonshine, fifty percent proof. It was good. Yep. <laughs> and so we opened it. I took a photo, and I sent it to him. He goes. Your family seems to be getting larger and larger. How do you handle it? I said, we give them moonshine and put them to bed. Because like there were so many of them. I'll have to put it up on, on social media for everyone. But these little dinkies, like really. And Pino Pony, he got peed off about it and left because it was not Pino. He, oh, he was, well, you can pour Pino in a mason jar. Come on. Okay. You know? We'll do that. Yeah, I we'll have to do have a, that. I need to talk. Yeah, I need to have a talk. Yeah. I know okay. they they miss you, but this is it. Mini mason jars. Who would think of that? And I'm like, oh my nope. gosh, could you imagine? Because we have our little dinkies when we go hiking sometimes oh, yeah. or whatever. Oh, you yeah. know, yep. mason jar dinkies. I think every airline should oh, have them. Oh my <laughs> lord. Oh, I agree. Oh. Something to do. Put awesome. It on list. Thank you so much, Diva Linda. Yeah. We're accepting the mission. We cannot wait uh, to share stories about shopping districts across the country, which means you have to get in the car with us soon. <laughs> and oh, come good. shopping. Oh, good. Yes, I was absolutely. That, I was, yeah, I was hoping that was, that was going to be part of, uh, of, of uh, this whole program. I'm looking forward to it. You girls know how to shop, so it's, like, it's going to be fun. Awesome. Thank you, Diva Linda. Everybody, again, uh, all in good taste.info. You can follow the Divas Adventures food, wine, shopping. She's also an expert on uh, Big Blend Radio and TV magazine and also in our Parks and Travel magazine. If you go to blendradioandtv.com or nationalparktraveling.com, just type in Linda or Diva and you'll find all her stories and interviews. And of course, follow us at loveyourparkstour.com. You'll be able to follow our mission possible story series, including our shopping, our unique shopping and not just unique and sparkly shopping destinations. <laughs> we'll have a whole section there. You can just click and watch as we add more destinations to our list or things. It might be a story on just specific gifts. You never it know. It could be anything. Could it be. could be anything. Thank you so much, Diva Linda. Thank you guys very much. And, and let's get out and do some shopping. All righty. All right.